Hello and welcome to the Snubble Sessions. I'm Jay and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We are going to be seeing if you can beat Fire Red or Leaf Green using only one Pokemon. And that Pokemon is going to be this guy. What's up guys? Today we are going to be attempting to beat Pokemon Leaf Green using just a Snubble. Now, while Snubble is the channel mascot, and the perfect combination in my opinion of cute and grumpy, it isn't the most viable Pokemon from a competitive standpoint. In Gen 3 it is still a pure normal type Pokemon as the fairy typing doesn't exist yet. These are Snubble's base stats and it doesn't necessarily have the deepest move pool either. Nevertheless, my love for Snubble means I think it's going to do a good job. The rules for this challenge are simple. Number one, Snubble can't evolve. Number two, Snubble can't hold any items other than an Everstone, which is just to prevent me having to press B constantly so I don't break the first rule. Number three, other Pokemon can't be used in battle. They can, however, be caught for use as HM slaves or to fulfill certain objectives like obtaining the Flash HM from Professor Oak's aid. The challenge will be considered successful if we beat the Elite Four. If you do enjoy this content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'm currently playing for a randomised Nuzlocke of Pokemon Fire Red and the link to that series is at the top of the screen now. I'm looking forward to spending some time with Snubble throughout this challenge. And with that said, let's start our adventure. After choosing Snubble, we can see that we've managed to get an Adamant Nature, which will boost Snubble's physical attacks. However, we also got the Runaway ability instead of Intimidate, making Snubble a little bit less threatening. Our first stop is to face Red outside of Viridian City where we easily beat his Pidgey and Bulbasaur. We decide to take his advice to hurry up and head straight to Viridian Forest. After reaching level 13, Snubble learns Bite. This is a perfect move for Snubble as it's a strong physical attack. Next up on our agenda is facing Brock. Now we know that Brock could be one of the harder gym leaders given his Pokemon's typing, but Snubble makes fairly short work of the Geodude before turning his attention to the Onyx and doing fairly well against him as well. We also learn that Snubble's a nutter and likes chomping on rocks. With the Boulder Badge now in the bag, we head over to Mount Moon where we fight off some rockets and get a fossil that we can't use in this challenge. On the way into Cerulean City, we find two move tutors, one of which teaches Snubble Mega Punch and the other Mega Kick, both which are fantastic move for this Pokemon and are stab given its normal typing. Next up is another rival battle and we beat Red fairly easily. After that we head over to Bill to get our SSN ticket and help him become a human again. On another note, does anyone else want to know what he was doing? to make himself a Pokemon. Seriously Bill, sort yourself out. Before we head off to the SSN, it's over to Misty for our second gym battle. A well placed Mega Kick takes out Starmie in one hit and we win the Cascade badge. We use the TM we receive from Misty to teach Snubble Water Pulse to help deal with any pesky rock or ground types. Next it's over to the SSN where we face our rival again and we receive cut from the captain. After waving goodbye to the SSM for the final time, we head over to Lieutenant Surge's gym. After roughly 72 hours of pressing switches, we finally get through to Lieutenant Surge. Seriously, I don't remember these switches being this difficult when I was a kid. A critical hit from Snubble allows it to Oko Raichu and we've gained our third badge. After that, it's straight onto Rock Tunnel. And after a quick rival battle in Lavender Town, we head straight into the game corner where we face Giovanni for the first time. 
Snubble defeats both of Giovanni's rock type Pokemon using Water Pulse, and Kangaskhan falls quickly to a Mega Kick and a Bite. Giovanni has fallen, and we're on to our next task of beating Erika. Erika is no match for our OP Snubble either, and we easily win the Rainbow Badge. After saving Mr. Fuji from Lavender Tower, we wake up Snorlax using the Poker Flute and head to face Koga and challenge for our fifth gym badge. So far in this challenge, Snubble hasn't shown any signs of letting up, but Koga presents us with some difficulties. Snubble does learn Crunch directly before we challenge Koga, however it proves to be of little use as we lose twice before eventually defeating him on our third attempt. I guess Snubble doesn't enjoy munching on poison as much as he does rocks. Nevertheless, we do eventually win the Soul Badge. With our fifth badge in hand, Snubble decides he wants to single-handedly take down a criminal organisation, so we head off to Saffron City to battle Team Rocket. Snubble isn't sure whether or not to take them seriously when he finds their security asleep on the job. A word of advice, buddy. Don't go asking for a pay rise anytime soon. Silphco itself is an absolute maze, and it isn't even just the rockets that want a piece of Snubble. Even the employees are trying to fight him. What are you doing? We're trying to save you. Ugh. Eventually, we do find our way around Silphco and head off to face Giovanni. On the way there, we bump into our rival, who rather than help us defeat the criminal mastermind, decides he would much rather just battle us. Thanks for your help, buddy! After fighting all of the rockets in the building, Snubble is a tired boy and does take several naps throughout this battle. However, he does eventually beat all of Red's Pokemon, and we continue on to Giovanni. Snubble's been really consistent throughout this entire challenge so far, and he continues to show his worth against Giovanni. He takes down all of his Pokemon without taking any damage at all. We head straight over to Sabrina's gym, where Snubble manages to defeat her psychic Pokemon using Crunch with relative ease. With only two more gym leaders and the Elite Four to beat, me and Snubble are feeling fairly confident that we can see this challenge through to the end. With the Marsh Badge in hand, it's now time to head over to Cinnabar Island to face Blaine. On our way there, we face perhaps our biggest challenge yet. As the battle rages on and on, I begin to wonder how many Magic Carps would be too many for Snubble to handle. Snubble grits his teeth and slowly but surely defeats the numerous pesky biscuits. Crisis averted, we turn our attention to Blaine and the task of obtaining our 7th gym badge. Using a combination of water pulse and dig attacks, Snubble defeats all four of Blaine's fire type Pokemon and we obtain the volcano badge. With just one more gym leader to face, this challenge is looking more and more like it's going to be successful. Confidence high, we head over to face Giovanni for the final time. We do actually take some damage in this battle and need to heal up throughout. However, that was mostly due to Snubble just being slower than Giovanni's Pokemon rather than him actually dealing a lot of damage. Snubble one-shots most of Giovanni's Pokemon using Dig and Water Pulse, and we've obtained our 8th Gym Badge. Ladies and gentlemen, Snubble's done it. 8 Gym Leaders defeated, all on his own, and we're off to face the Elite Four. After defeating our rival and heading through Victory Road, we arrive at the Elite Four. And this is where Snubble begins to encounter some problems. So far on this playthrough, we've got through most challenges with relative ease. And most of the Elite Four is no different. We smash through the first Elite Four and their Ice type Pokemon. We beat Bruno with ease, surprisingly taking no damage at all from his Fighting type Pokemon. 
Agatha's ghost types don't cause us too much trouble either, despite Gengar wanting to put us to sleep 7 million times in this battle. Even Lance's dragon types are no match for Snubble's raw power. So far so good, but where we really start struggling is when we face Red. Red starts out with a Pidgeot that uses Feather Dance. This lowers our attack by two stages. He follows up with a Gyarados and then an Arcanine who both have Intimidate as their ability, lowering our attack by a further two stages. By the time we reach Venusaur, we're offering no attacking threat whatsoever, which allows Venusaur to set up three growths and eventually one-shot us using Solar Beam. And in my mind, there's only one solution to this problem. Max out every stat that Snubble has by hitting level 100. So that's exactly what we go and do. After many battles and a few rare candies, Snubble reaches level 100. This is what Snubble's stats look like. I'm feeling confident that his 212 attack is going to help us beat the Elite Four. But just to make sure, Snubble and I have one last trick up our sleeve that we action before facing Red for a second time. And that trick is this. We learn Toxic replacing Crunch which is out of PP by the time we reach Red. And then we decide to learn Fire Blast replacing Earthquake, as Earthquake doesn't really do a lot to Red's team, and we're hoping that Fire Blast will put a big dent in his Venusaur. The fire type move shows its worth in the final battle. One alone almost takes out Venusaur, and because we are now a bit more of an offensive threat in this battle, it hasn't had time to set up as many growths as before, Combine that with the fact we're now at level 100, and we do finally beat Red. And Snubble's done it. Snubble has managed to beat the entirety of Leaf Green on its own. And to be honest, it hasn't done that bad. It had one time where it fainted against Red, and it lost a couple of times to Koga. But other than that, it's been fantastic. I hope that answers the question we set out to answer. You can indeed beat Leaf Green using only a Snubble. I would say though, I'm glad you don't have to buy Pokeballs to catch other Pokemon because the amount we did have to spend on potions at point was insane. But this is fantastic. It's great to see our team mascot enter the Hall of Fame. I've really enjoyed this playthrough with Snubble. What other Pokemon games would you like to see me solo run? let me know down in the comments. If you have enjoyed this video, please drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching!